but uh after one and we were gonna start 20 minutes ago <laughs> well it's noon for me well i know but according to my clock here it's 9 a.m <laughs> don't be like mom and dad <laughs> and it's january 23rd it's a monday holy fuck you're back in the future <laughs> like back in the past <laughs> or am i in the future you're in the fucking past dweeb good i want to redo the last five months <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Go Go Kaiju Show, where we have a healthy obsession with kaiju. I am your co-host, Kent, and with me is your other co-host, Jake. How's it going, peeps? Dear God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so today, for the first time in a while, we are actually, no, for the first time in like maybe a month and a half since we did uh, Godzilla X Kong, we are going to discuss another movie, this time 1996's Unforgettable for all the wrong reasons, Zarkor the Invader. <laughs> all right. Good night, everybody. <laughs> yep. I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> so before we begin, um, I just want to say, and I told Jason this already, um, as of, well, probably as of the time we just started here, about a half a sh- or so, I had learned that Tiamat, the serpentine creature, oh. X kong the new empire is getting a toy now this is a toy that has just been recently revealed it is starting its journey off in the united kingdom while there is at the time no official word yet as to uh whether or not it's going to be released in the u.s i would be shocked if it wasn't and so um if it is my guess would be in the next like month or two we'll probably maybe see a team at uh, state side so that's that's pretty good news i probably would bet that it's probably not gonna happen <laughs> especially sort of late in late in this game uh in my opinion at least yeah but for the collectors because be, because of the internet and social media and all that um they they know there will be older fans with access to internet and scratch that uh, will pony up uh, some money to get an order. Yeah, either through eBay or for those of you who are going to G-Fest when, if, if it comes out at that time. But uh, was it the, the other thing that I want to point out to you uh, is that with uh, Google Podcasts uh, going into the wayside over into the past or whatever, uh, fucking croaking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're gonna be on the uh, the YouTube uh, podcast uh, segment. YouTube's got a podcast thing. Yep, yep, yeah. They've had that for a while. So uh, I. But here's the thing: doesn't Google own YouTube? Yes. So they're probably just. Oh, that's what they're doing. It's just kind of merging into that. So uh, I would say be on the lookout for the the audio version of the podcast coming soon onto our YouTube channel. There, so and then also if you see if you see a subscribe button down below or above wherever you're watching us, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as smash the like button as well. All right, Zarkor, <laughs> the Invader. Um, the last time we watched this, I bought both this film and Craw uh, as DVDs from Suncoast, and I think that was like earlyish two thousands, and we both saw each movie once. And then I don't know how many years later I ended up getting rid of both DVDs. I so, don't, I don't ever the remember time I've seen the film. I don't ever remember actually seeing this film. <laughs> I remember we did. Cause I bought the DVD and we went home and we watched it and we both were like, this sucks. <laughs> so, and then we watch, I we're like, it sucks, but it's a little bit better than Zark. Yeah, I, I just do not remember. And, and that's probably the reason why I, I just completely scrubbed it out. My, my memory, <laughs> maybe for a good reason. And so unless things really like get into a really, um, in-depth discussion, which there's not a whole lot of depth is our Yeah, I'm, I'm going <laughs> gonna, I'm gonna to say right here, now there's probably not going to be too much dis- discussion here in this podcast. It could episode. be a very it's short not, podcast. Yeah, it's, pro- yeah, it's probably 
probably going to be 45 minutes or something of this. By the way, <laughs> and I don't remember, Jason, because like I had said something to you in Messenger last week where I watched it and I went to Letterbox and Zarkor had a better score than what movie? Did I say, was it Turbo? Uh, there was some movie I was saying that it, Zarkor had a better score than, and I'm like, what is wrong with you people? Why is Zarkor yeah, getting a 2.8 on Letterbox? And you said that, and then I saw the uh, the score f- over at the Amazon Prime video where I went to watch this for uh, for free, and it was right around the four star range. And I'm just like, what the fuck are people? Smoking and I understand. Right <laughs> I think for some people, it's a so bad it's good. And then was I was taking a look at the uh, the Wikipedia with some of the information and all that that it does has some sort of. Uh, cult following oh, when it comes to the monster itself, but not the movie as a whole. So there, there can be that uh, sort of crowd that's um, bringing the score up. There, there could be, and and yeah, I mean, I think there, yeah, there is something um, probably to that. Um, I, you know what? I, I don't know where to begin because again, we don't do discussions. Uh, we haven't done a whole lot of them recently, but all, all I, all I have to say is that nearly half of the movie, like literally almost half of the movie is in two places. Uh, the first one was at the, the main character's, uh, apartment where he's just like watching the TV for literally 10 or so minutes with the, the small alien that's, as like in a like woman's body, which looks attractive. <laughs> she looks attractive. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot of talking. Essentially you hear people in the TV and all that stuff, the newscasters. And then uh, once they get that done, they're over at the, this news station for like almost 10, like between 10 to 20 minutes. And that, <laughs> Those two nearly take half of the movie itself. And go ahead. Well, yeah, I mean, this is um, th- this is definitely a, a a film that there's multiple locations, but there's only like three of them, three or four of them. Um, I want to start off though at the beginning because. Um, uh, Reese Pugh, I think, is the actor's name who is uh, who plays Tommy, who is more or less our main character throughout the course of the film. He is a postal worker, and <laughs> this alien being that is, I will just say, like four or five inches tall, but disguised in a human form, mm-hmm. a very well endowed female, I will yeah. say. Um, <laughs> Comes and visits him, you know, materializes herself on his kitchen countertop. And <laughs> I'll ship this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and so Tommy is like freaked out. He sees this gal that's like, I'll just say six inches for the shit of it. She's like six inches tall. And he's like freaked out. Like, where'd you come from? And all that. She explains and all that. There's like 10 minutes of her explaining to him who she is, what race they are and why she's looking like a human being instead of like her natural alien form. And it goes on way too long. <laughs> like he's I said got earlier. This, <laughs> yeah. And he's got this look, cut, I'll see if I can try to do it with my face. He's got, sorry for those uh, li- listening to the audio version, but he's got this like, <laughs> <laughs> like look on his face throughout the whole movie. Basically. Like he, like he looks constipated in a way. And well, not only that, but he's just like, why me? And that's yeah. his default look throughout the entire film. And the one of the goofy things about this movie, amongst dozens of others, is that he not only like just totally buys into this whole Zarkor thing, even though it's on TV and stuff, but he totally buys into the fact too that this alien being as a well-endowed female again mind you Mm -hmm. 
is telling him he's the chosen one. And he immediately buys into all of this. Yeah. And he's always like, well, why me? And then it goes into another extra long spiel where she says, yeah, there are people better than you. And like half the population of the world is the other half isn't, but you are exactly in the middle because he's, he's got both good and bad qualities. And that somehow makes him more of an ideal candidate to stop Zarkort. It's like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so maybe, maybe the reason for this is, is to prolong the movie more to make it at least sort of in, interesting and in air quotes here. Uh, and like, if they had something that was like overqualified or something, it's probably going to take five minutes tops just for this movie <laughs> to last. Well, and the movie's runtime is already then, 75 minutes, which isn't very long. Yeah. Yeah. And if you had someone that was overqualified, you'd be like, what the fuck am I even doing in this, in this place to begin with? It's like, yeah. Are you, are you guys, so are you guys stupid or something? I mean, come on, alien, female, whatever the hell you are. It's like, why, why even bother with all this stuff? Well, yeah, and I, the actress's name is Tori Lynch. I guess her character's name is Proctor. And um, so on TV, when they're at his apartment and Proctor uh, kind of shows him this one channel, a Dr. Stephanie Martin, played by DePriest Grossman, uh, is on one of the stations. And so she's talking about Zarkor. And again, it's just... The nonchalantness of her character talking about this alien being that was hidden in a mountain and comes out in this tiny town and uh, was it rural California? Um, yeah, yeah, like where where Zarkor came. Uh, yeah, came Mount from. Aurora, or whatever the the place was called. It it doesn't matter. This movie yeah. doesn't deserve all that attention, but <laughs> <laughs> but or or the near discussion, <laughs> and so. What um, Proctor and, and even more so Tommy decides they're going to go get this Stephanie because she will believe him and maybe help him uh, figure out a way to defeat Zarkor, which one of the dumb things is that this Proctor character knows, I think, how to defeat Zarkor, but for whatever reason, she doesn't tell him. That's the and, feeling and, I got. And that's and that's where I'm just like. S saying to myself, you know, if you're the overqualified person, is like, why even tell me this when you can just fucking do it yourself? <laughs> the whole premise is deeply flawed. <laughs> like, yeah. very, very deeply flawed. <laughs> um, it's like if you if you want major plot holes or something like this. This is the this is the movie for you. <laughs> I, I don't even want to go in order. I just want to jump around because again, this movie doesn't deserve a whole lot of attention. So uh, <laughs> how about the whole news station part where he's supposed to be the hero and stuff, but then like who this guy that wrote the the script and all that? Neil Mar Marshall Stevens. Doesn't he Ah, man, I can't, uh, it's like if he, <laughs> if he imagines a hero looking like this, holy fuck. <laughs> it's like he, he pretty much portrays this Tommy Ward or this post office guy, the main character to make him look like an evil, like psychotic criminal or something of the sort. He's like a creeper, especially when he's creeper, at yeah. the news station trying to get Dr. Stephanie and yeah, like he's like creeping out on her. And yeah, I understand I, he's freaked out about this whole responsibility being placed on him, but again, like that and then grabbing the gun from one of the security guards there and then just taking her you know, to like the bathroom of the, the news station there, like a hostage and everything. And then 
having the cops and all that. Boy, two cops. Yeah, this one of them ends this, up believing him as well, just like that. Yeah. And points his own gun at his partner and says, you are letting him go. I believe him. And yeah, I'll lose my badge over this, but I'm going to help him. And he does end up helping him the rest of the movie. Yeah. And this Neil Marshall Stevens guy that wrote this script, it's like, do you not even know how a hero even works <laughs> for and, movies and all that? And I, I mean, you're think- portraying this guy as like a freaking criminal, like literal textbook criminal. And I don't, well, I mean, or a psychotic we've seen person. This in other films, and I think on some level it's justified because of just the stakes and sometimes the the amount of time in which you got to accomplish that. Like time comes into play a lot of but, times just to try to up the stakes even more. But there's there's other paths to make things. Oh yeah, I'm not. Yeah, then no, I, I'm. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm trying to like give them a little bit of credit where it's deserved. But like here's the very thing, like, very loosely, <laughs> very I loose think credit. Films like this one and Craw. I do. Here's the thing. I think the filmmakers of these two films, on some level, understood what they were making. That they realized, look, this is straight to video. At best, we get a cult following or whatever. We make a little bit of pennies off of this and whatever. You know, and we, we make a little bit of a living off of this. But I do not for one second believe that these two films, unlike other films, like The Lost Skeleton of Cadavra, are made to be satires of the genre that they are portraying. The Lost Skeleton of Cadavra is intentionally made to be a satire of 50s and 60s sci-fi horror films. Mm-hmm. Zarkor and Craw, I truly do not believe there's made to be satires. And not, that's not the- kind of what makes it... If these were made to be satires, I honestly would be like, look, yes, this movie is garbage, but it's fantastic garbage. I mean... I, if, it, if it was satire, you, you probably would have some sort of uh, comedic uh, scenes here and there with uh, the character, uh, the human characters in here. There are a and, few, but with the, but majority of it is all serious here and there, and that's sort of the problem. That to me, in my opinion. They're trying not to do this as a satire thing, but more right, that's, of a yeah. serious thing. It's unintentionally funny because of how bad the writing is, how bad the acting is, how bad some of the uh, staging and effects are. For example, I have to say this before I potentially forget. There's this scene where all three, uh, Tommy, uh, Dr. Martin, and what was the one police officer? George. Name? George, yeah. Yeah played by Mark Hamilton. They are riding in their car to go to one of the communities in Arizona because there's some weird bullshit thing about a place in Arizona and where Zarkor showed up, where we're su- they're supposed to find the secret to defeating Zarkor. And they're supposed to be on a highway at one point. And occasionally, like, you know, the lights overhead flash. I knew, I knew you were going to get... <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> But when you look at, and you don't have to look too hard to no. realize, Absolutely. they are those luminescent lights that you get in a shop, and someone is wanding them over the car like every 10 seconds. Yeah. And you look at it, it's just, it's on I mean, a wand. It's, wait a minute, that doesn't even come close to looking like yeah, a street light. It, and when it comes to these night car scenes, there's obvious ways to go about with the whole lighting thing. Cause I've seen uh, mechanical like behind the scenes uh, things on how to do, how to make that sort of famous light thing kind of going over the car. Like you're actually driving, but obviously you're not like there is some sort of like a uh, way, some sort of uh, type of uh, uh, mechanical thing that kind of goes back and forth above you where you have 
the lights kind of going from forward to backwards and then sort of turn off and then try to go forward and then turn the lights back on and then all that. But mm. yeah, <laughs> I, I noticed that too. And I was like, I bet you we're going to be uh, touching upon that. And here we are. <laughs> we're touching upon I that. I have to. It, it was so in your face. You can't ignore it. And th there's so much of that is just awful. And we already sort of touched on it, but I want to talk again about how this movie is longer than it should. And it's a 75 minute film. And I think they had to do that. Otherwise, I think they were maybe going to have issues trying to release it. Too many scenes in this movie are too long. Well, mainly, mainly due to the very first one, which was uh, the main character's apartment, where it was around 10 or so minutes, and then the news station one. Those were the two longest ones, and that's the first half. Literally and, the first half. And then they go visit, I think his name is Arthur, played by Charles Arthur. Schneider. Arthur is a whole different story. <laughs> I will say this though: Charles Schneider is indeed the best actor in this film. However, his portrayal adoring. of Arthur as this wacky, goofy, sci scientific guy is not only over the top, but so ridiculous that he gets on your nerves after a while. Not not just ridiculous, but the most annoying. Granted, yeah, I think he was probably the most energetic. Uh, cast in this and probably really into it, but I would say too far into it. To I will give him props he got because too he committed himself to that role. Yeah, yeah and but, he was the best actor by far in this whole thing. But the, the 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 downside is that it got to the point to where he went a bit too far and got a bit annoying after a while. Yeah, because there were like three or four times during their whole stay at his place where he kept looking back at Tommy and Dr. Martin and like, oh, they're going to kiss her. There's a romance blossoming. It's just like, shut up, dude. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's just like, it's one thing if you say it once, but when you go beyond that, that's too much. Mm -hmm. And... um what else man like the acting by and large is terrible the end let's call it a show <laughs> like oh, oh. <laughs> the very the very end when uh tommy ward when he wakes up after defeating uh zarkor you know where i'm getting at with this one and you know you have uh george and stephanie next to him and stuff in the hospital room where, where he wakes up. And then you had the, uh, the same gal from that news station where they were at previously. And then she was saying, Oh, there's, there's like a grassroots, uh, like a movement that kind of gets you drafted to be uh, president of the United States. And then, uh, she asked him, are you willing to do it? And then he's like, yeah, sure. Black blacks out. And then credits roll. That's it. <laughs> There's nothing else. It's like, what the what the fuck is that? <laughs> oh my god, so fucking stupid. <laughs> but here, didn't you think about this for a second? I realized it like 20 seconds into that hospital. So they're in like L.A. or whatever. They're in California. He's from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Okay. He doesn't go to the hospital until he gets back home. Think about that for a second. That makes no sense. Because he's interviewed by that same local news gal out of New Jersey where he lived. Mm -hmm. She should not be the one interviewing him. It should be someone totally different. Which tells you he blacked out or whatever after his... Too many that they have a very low work. budget. <laughs> That's your reason. And he doesn't go to the hospital there, which he should have. Any if it if that actually happened, anybody who got earned, you know, hurt or whatever would be going to local hospitals wherever the incident took. Yeah, the nearby county hospital or something. He would not black out and then they'd be like, Well, we can't take care of him here. Take him back where he came from. 
and then <laughs> ship him back to New Jersey, and then he's in the hospital there. No, that doesn't happen. <laughs> the main reason is that this project has very low budget. <laughs> That's your reason. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know where else to go because. Uh, let, let, about, actually, let's about, talk about Kaiju. Well, how about the reason for like the the actual way of uh, defeating Zarkor is this fucking shield that somehow not only comes with Zarkor, but also makes an impact in Arizona in this one town. I don't know what the name of it is, and like. Harder, supposed to be harder than diamond and all that. And it's like, okay, you use a shield to defeat Zarkor. Whoop de do. It <laughs> By is using very, his lasers. <laughs> it's very <laughs> anticlimactic for sure. Yeah, very. Because, and it's not exciting at all. Even though he gets somehow Zarkor misses him with each blast, anyways. Because there really were a couple one moments shot. where, sh <laughs> well, yeah, there were a couple moments before he really had like the shield up, and Zarkor should have had him. The other thing is that when they confront Zarkor, what fucking city are they in? Are they in the same like? Is it supposed to be the like the same small town? Are they in Vegas? Are they in Phoenix? Where? <laughs> My thought process was that Zarkor was like maybe in or near L.A. That was just my thinking. But yeah, I mean, you're right. We truly don't know. But it's definitely a more urban area. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, too, you know, that early in the movie where they had the the text like in the the lower third area of supposedly where you're of where this location is supposed to be but then it seems like they fucking forgot after like the the news station area oh speaking <laughs> of the oh, news station got some. i completely forgot about this the very beginning when tommy ward goes to the news station and try to go uh, from door to door trying to see if one of the doors are unlocked or anything and then once he gets to the actual door where he goes in, you have one guy coming out, and then he he tries to hide, making it look like he was supposed to hide. But then you have this same exact guy coming out from the news station. You think that he would spot Tommy Wars, like, what the fuck are you doing here? Get out of here. But yeah, he doesn't see it. Not even from the side of his like uh, peripheral vision <laughs> and just the this way that where, Tommy if I had Ward, a soundboard I'd have that guy from 40 year old virgin saying use your peripherals yeah <laughs> and and the way that Tommy Ward tr tries to go and hide <laughs> I was like this has to be the dumbest James Bond looking like <laughs> type of way of getting into a secret place secret place or a this destination that you want to go to <laughs> i mean it's a, it's a it's a slap in the face to just movies in general um but i want to talk about the kaiju aspect first because that's why we're here that's mm -hmm. why there's this podcast you know we're talking you know about not just everything else you know the acting and the story and all that but the kaiju action i will give credit where credit's due some of the miniatures and the sets were decent. You know, I mean, you could obviously tell they didn't have a large set, which was fine. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to dock them points for that. And and some and the miniature work was pretty decent for yeah, the low of, budget that it is. Yeah, some and of the Zark Horse suit, not only is the design pretty neat, the suit functionality and, and all that is pretty good too. So I, was, I will give them credit where it's due. Yeah, I would say... Uh, a lot of the miniature stuff, they did some uh, good detailing of it, like mm -hmm. with some of the street signs and even some of the vehicles and stuff. And, and I would say the same thing with uh, the Zarkor uh, suit uh, as well. I think it's 
uh, pretty good looking, even with, mm -hmm. I don't even know what the budget is because it's not even listed uh, from too where low. I'm seeing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably too low. The one thing I'll have to um, at least dock points on is, is that they use the same war as a T-Rex from Jurassic Park. Yeah, it's a here. slightly tweaked version of that, but it is the T Rex roar from Jurassic uh, Park, which was used in a lot. It was used in a lot of cartoon shows, mm -hmm. uh, other cheap movies. I mean, that roar is all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that disappointed me about the whole film, other than it just being all around terrible, is the fact that we don't get a whole lot of Zarkor. I would say and when we do the scenes are very short. Yeah, I would say he only appears at minimum three, max I would say four. Yeah, and probably the max I would say the max amount of time would be four, uh, four to five minutes stops. And the ending confrontation between Zarkor and Tommy is, I mean, again, it's a low budget movie. So if your expectations are for something like halfway decent, that's kind of on you, but it is really stupid because of just the fact that Zarkor comes with something to just, that would be like me being born with like a pistol and being like, look, if you want to destroy me, you got to kill me with that gun that came with me. That makes no sense. Okay, so it's dumb to begin with. The other thing is that uh, Zarkor is an idiot because I would think Zarkor would know what that thing Tommy was carrying was. And as a result, once he saw it, would not bother to use its eye lasers that, hey, guess what? You're a hundred foot tall monster. Go step on him. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Does be accurate. Doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but then if Zarkor knows Tommy is the chosen one within the, what, 24 hours or so that takes place from the moment Tommy is notified of this to when he confronts Zarkor, Zarkor doesn't even leave the state of California. Zarkor should have been like out of California across like the lower tip of Nevada into what is it like Wyoming that's next door or whatever. Like, Zarkor should have been heading east. And instead, I think Zarkor headed more west. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. And yeah. Zarkor is like, I got to come after you because you're the chosen one. But yeah, and I'm going to go this what's way. What's the whole point of this? <laughs> Me, like, And I don't remember all what Proctor said to Tommy at the beginning, but did Proctor's race send Zarkor? As like a test for humanity, I don't remember. Here, let it, me ask. It sort of it sort of sounds like it because I know she said that it's supposed to be a test, and we're giving you all this information. Yeah, challenge mankind. You. Yep. Yeah. So, okay, then I take back what I said earlier about her not telling him about how to defeat it. But okay, so this other alien race, in some sense, is almost playing godlike. And they're being dicks about it because mm -hmm. they're just deciding they're going world to world. Hey, there's sentient life here. Let's see how good they are. We'll send this monster down there. So in other words, aren't they the keepers of Zarkor? And then on top of that, why don't we see them again? And why is it humanity going after this race and saying, look, buttheads, you did this to us. X number of people have died. There's millions of dollars in damage. We're coming to get you. Well, for one thing, this uh, Proctor alien only comes to uh, Tommy Ward here. Yeah. Uh, to anyone else. And you would have to have Tommy Ward's actually go to the government. And and something. True, or, yeah. or if he's le elected president, <laughs> according to the ending. Um, oh, and God. then he, he probably, if, and if he wins, uh, he'd be the one to say, okay, I was... Uh, mentioned to uh, this uh, by this alien from this race that they're the ones responsible for breaking down Zarkor to challenge us. So then we're going to have to try to do whatever we can to uh, take some action or whatever if they decide to come back. It, but will they believe him or will he think he's some quack 
Because, yeah, like you said, she only showed up to him. Yeah. So would they think like he's schizophrenic or something? Like, oh, dear, what have we done? This guy is off his rocker. <laughs> I have no idea. That's that's why they cut it so short right after he sa- he says that he accepts uh, running for president. <laughs> it's like because they oh, realize oh, we, they- don't, we don't want to show what's going to actually happen. After and not only that, they realize <laughs> everyone watching this that is at least cognizant of what's going on is going to be like, Wait a minute, I got more questions. And then they're like, no, we're not going to answer anymore. <laughs> we're cutting it here. We know it's going to raise more questions. So. It's like, uh, uh. <laughs> don't ask. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> That's a stupid movie. Uh, I, I wish I could get into further detail, but it's just going to result in more sighing and head shaking. Yeah. I mean, uh, Like, what else do we want to discuss here with this thing? I would say uh, there's another good part to this. The other good part to this is the catchy tune at the end credits. I heard about it, but I only listened to five seconds before I turned it off (laughs) because I didn't want it stuck in my head. Well, they they actually hired a band. uh, That's where the money went. And and it's a theme song where where they were saying like, Zarkor and all that stuff. It was pretty catchy. That's probably one of the uh, uh, the other upsides, but I know it's not going to save this movie. Not at the least. Why did they hire a band? I would have saved that money and had it go towards I bet, I bet actors. And, and get this, the music is by Richard Band. I'm not shitting you. The guy's last name is Band. <laughs> okay. So there's no originality to that. <laughs> I, but I'm not sure if he's the one responsible for like being the, the actual guy doing the band stuff. He, he might have done the orchestral stuff. But, but even I, then, yeah. like, look, like, can you imagine being the producers on this? Like, we need someone to make the music. <gasps> band. Band, music, music, band. <gasps> we found our guy. <laughs> it's like Batman 66 logic. <laughs> Just. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> C. C. Ocean. Penguin. No Robin. C. As in cat. Catwoman. <laughs> like, it's, it's that sort of thing. It just. <laughs> But see, that one was tongue in cheek. That show was made to be hilarious. Yeah. This movie wasn't. It, this was made to be, on some level, respectable entertainment. And that's 75 minutes, technically 150 minutes, because of when I watched this thing back in the early 2000s that I'm never getting back. Yeah. And guess what? I'm going to lose more of my <laughs> lifestyle whenever we do Crawl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is what? Yeah. Probably two weeks from now is when we're going to do that one. Yeah. At least the upside is that we're finally getting this band aid off. <laughs> Look, I, I, and I, Jason and I, we were having a little bit of a conversation about this when I was watching the darn thing yesterday. Um, well, I watched. Were you wa- watching it? But I know you were and tell me that you were watching Ape. I was watching Ape. That was my <laughs> first time yeah. watching the film because I heard it was crazy go nuts. And. Look, the, the movie's terrible and awful in a lot of r- ways, too. However, like I told Jason, it is at least, on some level, a bit more watchable than Zarkor. And, and, I, <laughs> and I know I was asking you if, when you compare these two, which one would you prefer, or would you think that Ape is a bit better compared to Zarkor? And it's like, yes, that is what I want you to ask. <laughs> Yeah, by a small amount. And I showed Jason like the first, like, what, minute and a half of Ape. And there's just some goofy crap going on there. (laughs) Yeah. But we're going to talk about that for another time. (laughs) Zarkor the Invader. I would would say, and I don't know if we want to get into our review or final grade. Um, I would say out of my 32 years, practically a majority of my life of being a Kaiju fan and 
or many movies and TV shows of kaiju related stuff that I've seen. I would say by far this is the worst movie I've ever seen by far. And for me there's really not a whole lot <laughs> I can really say about it. I know um, I've seen some really really terrible movies. I know Zarkor for sure is definitely one of the worst. I'm not quite sure if I'm ready to call it the worst yet, but it certainly is down. For me, for me, yeah. in my opinion, it is by far the worst. And if I would give it a grade, I'm gonna give I'm gonna make a new grade. GFA. That fucking awful. <laughs> I like that. There's a new t-shirt. <laughs> I'm going to give it that grade. It does not even deserve an F or an F minus. It deserves a GFA. <laughs> yeah. And well, and like I said a second ago, it definitely is um, one of the worst uh, monster movies I've ever seen. And, I, and I'm just going to leave it in terms of just monsters because that's what this podcast is about. Uh, it definitely is one of the worst. I, like I said, I hesitate just to say it is the worst because I have definitely seen more than Jason has, and some of those have been bad. And I'm just, I'm, I don't remember all that of, of what I've seen, and so I, it could be. I just don't remember all the films that I've seen, but it definitely is down there. And yeah, I mean, I, I will give props where it's due. The the Zarkor Sue is pretty good, miniature work, good for for what this is. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that everything else is awful. Um, and on some levels, yes, it is unintentionally funny. And I think this movie is better if you have at least one other person in the room with you to laugh and make fun of it with you. That's why I can't wait for the commentary on this that we do at some point, because I do we have to. it will be <laughs> fun. We're going to have so much fun with it. If we do, that's going to have to be one where we booze it up. Um, oh. That's what we're going to have to do if we do that. And and I um, and I haven't drank for nearly six months, and I want to keep that going. <laughs> maybe maybe on the one year anniversary of your sobriety, we'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I'm doing a GFA on this one as well. Um, <laughs> this this one definitely you know, is not like a skeleton, a lost skeleton of cadaver where it is made to be satirical. This was made to be some form of entertainment, legitimate entertainment. And it's not, I am not joking when I say that I almost fell asleep once when I was watching this here a week ago, I almost did. And when you first start off the movie, it grabs your attention because it's it, it's it, it, like the old train wreck syndrome. Like you can't turn away from it mm -hmm. and you're laughing at it and all that. But then as the movie continues to progress, you realize this isn't funny anymore. Like this is bad. And I knew it was bad, but now the badness is starting to wear on me. Well, when it gets to <laughs> the very first scene with Tommy Ward's apartment, it starts to get to you pretty quick. After Within like three minutes, yes. <laughs> or, or like with the first five minutes, you don't really hear anyone talking or anything. There's just only one word blurred out Avalanche! <laughs> <laughs> That's a new t shirt. <laughs> Avalanche! Exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> damn this movie <laughs> <laughs> but don't watch it we'll we'll save you the time you, but you're if better you're off curious, avoiding it if you're curious we definitely say you are forewarned <laughs> and that you're going to regret losing 75 minutes of your life to this movie <laughs> And with that being said, are we going to do Craw <laughs> next? <laughs> like I said, at least we're going to get the Band-Aids off soon. okay, so, sooner or uh, later. We're going to have to, so might as well do it. So two so weeks from now, which out. will be June 8th. 
Mark your calendars, everyone. We're going to be talking about Craw on June 8th. <laughs> June 8th or 9th. I still need to double check, actually, my kids' calendar to make sure. It's June 8th or 9th, one of those days. Well, they're not going to really know because we aren't live anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. But, hey, more terrible stuff for you to avoid. But uh, this is going to be a real short episode, and that's okay because there's... Fine with us. To talk about. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> we will be back in a couple of weeks for probably another short podcast, this time on Craw. However, I will say this. If memory serves me correctly, back in the day when I watched that one with Jason again, maybe his memory erased that one too. Yeah, because uh, I don't I don't ever remember watching both of these movies, and, and that's probably a good reason why. <laughs> my nice memory now, my correct. Uh the cross suit is good, if not even better than the Zarkor suit. And the movie is just a little bit better. And I would so, say the reason for that is that they learned their lesson, at least their lesson for Zarkor, because th that movie was made. What the fuck? Uh, it was made <laughs> two years later. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I memory serves me correct. It was just a tad better, but we'll we'll find out. But thank you so much for joining us. Please like and subscribe. Do all that fun stuff. Smash and the we'll like see you button. In a couple couple weeks. All right, guys. We'll see you guys next time.